Good morning, Dog Crew 2 and Cujo. Madeline says good morning. Sounds like she's got a future in uh, show business. In this live television picture, you uh, can see the lid uh, closing to the uh, Solar Extreme Hitchhiker experiment. That will keep uh, that particular telescope uh, free of any uh, thruster, jet thruster contamination uh, during the course of the rendezvous maneuvers, which will be uh, ongoing over the next several hours. Denver Houston, we see a good burn. Flight Dynamics Officer reports that the uh, rendezvous burn was uh, right on the money, uh, placing Endeavour on an uh, increased uh, trajectory and the proper course to intercept the uh, Spartan Science satellite. Countdown clocks now ticking backward uh, toward the next uh, burn, which will occur a little over uh, two hours from now. That will be a uh, NCC burn, a corrective combination burn that will uh, uh, improve the orbiter's uh, trajectory heading toward the Spartan satellite uh, using a, uh, a state vector updated by uh, star tracker passes and onboard navigational updates that the crew will be receiving over the next couple of hours.
Endeavor Houston. Uh, for Cujo, we copied your last about the uh, low rate on Spartan when you came in uh, during the during the fly around, and that, uh, from our initial uh, assessment, is consistent. That and the incorrect attitude of Spartan is consistent with uh, the Spartan vehicle going into a minimum reserve power mode sort of a shutdown and uh, after we've uh, birthed Spartan we're going to get you during the post recovery config to give us uh, statuses uh, and uh, possibly assess uh, what might have happened. Hey, thanks, man. We're in the middle of uh, birthing right this very instant, and we'll talk to you about that in just a few minutes. So it took a, a little longer than had been expected, but the uh, Spartan Science Satellite was successfully retrieved by Endeavour's astronauts. And uh, and now has been uh, placed in its berthing platform in the cargo bay for the trip back home. Uh, the timeline uh, for the rest of the day's activities for the astronauts will have uh, some minor revisions to it. The major uh, activity for the rest of the day will be pre-deployment checkouts and health checks of the Wakeshield facility, which is scheduled to be deployed uh, around 4.45 a.m. Central Time tomorrow morning. This is Mission Control, Houston.
as Endeavour has just passed over the easternmost edge of the South American continent, now out flying over the Atlantic Ocean at an altitude of about 202 nautical miles. After the second burn, the OMS-4 burn that's being conducted later today to circularize Endeavour's orbit, Mike Gernhardt will reach out with the shuttle's robot arm and he will use that to grapple the wake shield facility. It will remain in that configuration overnight in the payload bay with the arm attached to it in anticipation of that deployment tomorrow. Wake shield will then spend about 48 hours trailing the orbiter at a distance of 30 to 40 miles. During that time it will attempt to use a, a process called molecular beam epitaxy to grow very thin films for use in the semiconductor industry. Retrieval of the wake shield facility is set for Wednesday at 10.16 a.m. However, about the last five hours of its flight will uh, be devoted to its use basically as a target as Ken Cockrell and Dave Walker on the flight deck will conduct a series of complex maneuvers allowing Endeavour to fire its engines toward the wake shield facility in an attempt to s increase our n knowledge base about the effects of thruster jet firings on objects in space, this as we enter the era of the space station. All systems on board are continuing to perform very well. The crew members are in the waning hours of their day. In just over an hour, Mission Specialist Mike Gernhardt is supposed to begin an eight-hour sleep period. He'll be joined about an hour later by his crewmates, who will have an abbreviated seven-hour sleep shift before they begin wake shield deploy activities Monday. The crew's wake-up call will come tonight at 11.09 p.m. Central Time, and that's when they'll wake up to begin flight day five on orbit. For the next several days, Mission Specialists Mike Gernhardt and Jim Newman will slightly alter their sleep patterns so that one or both of them is awake at all times for critical commands for the wake shield facility. They will not be providing 24-hour support. However, they will be awake during all critical commanding periods for that facility. Once again, we are receiving l live television from the payload bay cameras on board Endeavour as Endeavour is sailing some 203 nautical miles over the surface of the Atlantic Ocean, just about to cross over the southernmost tip of the African continent. Newman will be maneuvering the shuttle's robot arm to grapple the wake shield facility, which is mounted on its cross bay carrier in Endeavour's payload bay. The spacecraft and the arm will remain in that configuration overnight with the shuttle's robot arm securely grappled to the spacecraft in anticipation of its deployment at 4.42 a.m. Central Time Monday. the message that was just sent up to the crew members on board. Just a reminder to Jim Newman as he maneuvers that arm that the Solar Extreme Ultraviolet Hitchhiker canister, which is mounted directly behind the Wake Shield facility as part of the International Extreme Ultraviolet Hitchhiker payload, is in the will be uh, doing some observing during the time that the arm is in motion. And just a reminder to him that if he can keep from crossing the path of that observation, that will help that experiment continue its activities. Here in the flight control room, the officer and okay, back with you. Tater ceased, and we see a good grapple. Yeah, story. That's what we got. The officer in charge of the shuttle's robot arm here in the flight control room reporting a good grapple that confirmed by the crew members on board Endeavour as well.